Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Leftoids, get off our platform. That pretty much wraps it up, folks. The left has officially lost Twitter. You know that classic meme with the Somali pirate, I am the captain now. Well, leftoids, Twitter is our platform now. Now, of course, I'm largely kidding. It's contradictory to the point in general that Twitter should be a platform for everyone. But the joke is, for so long, leftoids have viewed Twitter Twitter as their own. It's their little safe space, similar to Reddit, and conservatives are not allowed to exist there. Opposing opinions, opposing narratives are not allowed to exist on their platform. That's largely been the stance. I mean, if they had their way, I'm pretty sure they'd just ban all major conservatives and turn it into a nice little leftist bubble. Well, no more, because Elon Musk is officially going through with his purchase of the Twitter platform. A lot of people were doubting, but at the end of the day, he never really pulled out of the deal. He was trying to get a better deal that's absolutely undeniable and while many people were saying he's not gonna buy it he's gonna pull out well it seems as though he's buying it and it's a whole lot more wide-ranging of a project than you might expect and so of course 2022 continues to be the year that keeps on giving the left lost cnn trevor noah just got fired we're most likely going to see a Republican election sweep. And now Elon Musk is buying Twitter. The W's keep stacking up right on top of each other. And it's another L in the column for the political left and their monopoly on speech and censorship online. Let me show you guys exactly what's going on. Let's talk about it. And of course, why it's important. We've got some stuff to get into. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks, take a look at this. Elon Musk now suggests that he is eager to buy Twitter and claims that it will help him build a quote everything app after fears of an embarrassing trial forced him to follow through on the $44 billion deal. Elon Musk tweeted on Tuesday suggesting that he is now eager to buy Twitter. Buying Twitter is an accelerant to creating X, the everything app, he tweeted. Musk offered no other details on his plans for the mysterious everything app. Earlier Tuesday, Musk agreed to buy Twitter for $44 billion as he had originally offered. The billionaire spent several months trying to back out of a merger agreement. He cited rampant spam and bot accounts in claiming the deal was invalid. The case had been set to go to trial in Delaware court on October 17th. In renewing his offer, Musk demanded the lawsuit and trial be halted. His sudden U-turn on Tuesday means he could own the company within days. So here's the thing. The framing they're trying to go with is that Musk was trying to back out of the deal. I never thought this to be the case. Elon Musk just wanted a thorough report and investigation into the whole bot situation. Twitter's valuation is clearly based off of the number of users, and the accusation that a sizable chunk of Twitter users are bots, well, it has some serious implications. What if Elon Musk now takes over the platform and realizes actually the platform isn't 5% bots, it's 25 or 30% or maybe even higher? higher. Well, then he just got scammed. I just think he was trying to save himself from a bad deal. But at the end of the day, it looks like this is the deal that he's going to get. It seems as though he's happy with it. I mean, who really cares at the end of the day when you're worth what, like $200 billion? He's taking the deal and moving forward. The man's putting his money where his mouth is. I mean, he sold billions of his personal Tesla stock in order to make the deal. And so clearly he had serious intentions to actually buy the platform. And now it's really happening. As the Daily Mail reports, he could take over the company within days. And you know what that means. The purge will begin. Mr. Parag Agrawal is probably going to be out of a job. The trust and safety director, a lawyer that showed up on Joe Rogan's podcast with ex-Twitter CEO and Twitter founder Jack Dorsey, probably going to get the boot as well. And we covered previously that Elon Musk plans to trim down staff by 10% the moment he gets in, cutting some fat, so to speak, and probably getting rid of a good chunk or all of the useless woke employees. This is a good thing. I mean, it's not exactly hard to figure that one out. If leftoids are freaking out and panicking over this development, then clearly it's a good thing. At the end of the day, it's kind of like a pick your poison, pick your evil kind of thing. I'm sure a lot of people would like decentralized platforms, you know, platforms that aren't owned by tech billionaires and oligarchs that are siphoning your information and selling it to the highest bidder. But at the end of the day, is that really realistic? Is that ever going to happen? Maybe down the line in the future, but as of now, probably not. And one thing I'll say for sure, which is a massive W, I'd much rather have the online town square be controlled by Elon Musk than Jack Dorsey or Mark Zuckerberg or any of these other clear biased leftist authoritarians that seek to skew public discussion one way. This could have serious major implications and in a good way because we know who Elon Musk is. He 
he's genuine. He's very similar to Donald Trump in the sense that he actually says what he's feeling and what he's thinking. He's not like these other tech oligarchs who say one thing, do another, who pretend to be politically neutral and unbiased when really they're putting their thumb on the scale. We know Elon Musk is in the middle politically. He said he would vote for Democrat candidates, and he's even publicly endorsed someone like Ron DeSantis. And he's on the record of totally condemning online censorship, but more specifically, the cover-up of the Hunter Biden laptop scandal from back in 2020. Tony Bobolinsky just said this, Hunter's ex-business partner claims FBI agent, who resigned, ignored his evidence weeks before the 2020 election, says Jim Biden called him in the middle of an interview and says Joe acted as a chairman of his son's deals for decades. Tony Bobolinsky alleged the FBI was well aware of Hunter Biden's laptop contents and accuses the Federal Bureau of Investigation of, quote, altering history by suppressing the laptop before the 2020 vote. Well, it's not just the FBI, it's also Twitter and Facebook, which we learned from the most recent Mark Zuckerberg interview on the Joe Rogan podcast that the FBI was behind the censorship on those two platforms in the first place. Well, it seems as though that is no longer going to happen. Headed into the next couple of elections, no longer is Twitter going to impact election results to benefit Democrats. No longer will you go on the Twitter homepage and see nothing but pro-Democrat and anti-Republican trends or stories being pushed on the what's happening tab. No longer. I've been on Twitter for a very long time and this is the one thing I kept pointing out throughout the election season. It's absolutely skewed. It's totally disgusting how every single time you go on the platform, it's nothing but anti-Trump garbage being pushed on the what's happening tab, being artificially promoted in place there from all your favorite leftist publications networks and tabloids and anything even remotely right-wing never even makes it even if it's massively trending it'll make it on the trending tab with a little synopsis giving the context in a very neutral matter-of-fact way that's the standard applied to stories that benefit Republicans but of course if anything benefits Democrats it's all over the place it's shoved in your face as well as leftist public figures tweets being shoved in your face even though you're not following them well no longer is that the case and no longer is Twitter gonna censor a massive story story like the Hunter Biden laptop and the alleged corruption connecting the current president, no longer will a story like that be banned from even being linked or discussed. And that, my friends, is clearly a good thing. Twitter might just be redeemable in the end. I mean, the word Twitter itself has become almost like an insult. Not nearly as bad as Loretta, obviously, but still pretty bad nonetheless. Well, moving forward, Twitter might see redemption after all, as based Elon Musk takes over as as the liberals screech a collective howl of agony that you can hear from thousands of miles away. <laughs> generally, that's the sign that something good is happening. That's the sign that people are waking up and that something's getting better, something's getting fixed. And in this case, that is absolutely the case. Keep coping, leftoids. It's another massive L to add to the column. You guys are really racking them up now, aren't you? 2022, at least culturally, has been a spectacular year. That's what I got for you guys, though. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel if you guys are up for it. I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.